Welcome to God of Glory Ministries. My name is Rod James. Appreciate you joining us today. We're going to be looking today at uh, Romans chapter 11 and verse 25 and uh, studying to not be ignorant and studying to not be spiritually blind. And this is going to be the first part of a series of things that we're going to look at studying the Word of God about things that uh, even Christians don't have any idea about. And it's important to know what you believe and why you believe it. Let's read uh, Romans 11 and verse 25. It says, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. It, you know, uh, there's nothing when you're really hot on a hot day. There, there, there's very few things that feel better than taking uh, a handful of cool water and splashing it on your face. And, and unless you jump into the ocean. That would feel better. Rereading a little bit of the word is refreshing. It can give you a little bit of understanding. But reading a lot of the word, digging deep into the word, is like jumping into the ocean. In the first part of chapter 11, as we've gone through it, we've seen that Paul said that God forbid that God hadn't cast away Israel. Later in the chapter, we see that they were cast away. And as we looked at it at the time, we saw that they'd cast themselves away. God didn't cast them away, yet they'd been cast away because they'd cast themselves away. Then we looked at how the the Gentiles had been grafted into the covenant that God made with Israel. And that Paul relates to us that Israel can be grafted back in and the Gentiles could be taken back out. He said, don't be ignorant of this mystery yeah, know, know, know what you know what you believe and, and know what the scripture says we're going to look today at uh, those two things I said study to not be ignorant and study to be spiritually blind and that'll just be scratching the surface of what we're going to do with this this will take at least several weeks Romans 8, 6 says, To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. We have to change our minds about the Scripture. We have to see and know what the Scripture says, and we have to give it a very, very high place in our lives. Paul says, Don't be ignorant of spiritual things. Uh, don't be ignorant. And he says, brethren, it's spoken to Christians. He's not talking to those that are lost. He's not talking to those that have not seen or read the scripture. He's not talking to those who don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's talking to Christian brothers and sisters in the Lord and says, don't be ignorant about this. Do not not know what this is talking about. He says, don't be ignorant of this mystery. Don't be ignorant of any mystery. If there's something in the word of God that you don't understand what it means, dig deeper. Ask someone that does know. It's very important that we know the word of God. This, this ministry was founded on Proverbs 25, 2. 
It says it is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a, ma a matter. God puts things in front of us that we may not totally understand, and he wants us to love him enough and to care enough about the things of God to find out what they are. It's the honor of kings to search out a matter. You know, the word calls us kings and priests. He's made us all to be kings and priests in Christ. So it is to our honor, it's to our benefit to not be ignorant of spiritual things. We're, we're to be wise in God's thoughts and not be wise in our own thoughts. The, the word in the King James Version says your own conceits. You, your own proud ideas. Uh, don't be wise in what you think is right or what you think you know. Be wise in what God actually is telling us. He says that partial blindness, that partial hardening has happened already to Israel. So look, look how it's turned out so far for Israel. Now we'll see in uh, verse 26 when we get to that in several weeks. It says all Israel will be saved. And that's a completely different topic. But he says look how they are right now. So that partial blindness. Uh, that partial hardening of their hearts. Has already happened to Israel. He wanted us to understand that this covenant relationship is interactive. You can be put in, you can be taken back out. Israel was in, they got taken out, they can be put back in again. It, it depends on you. It depends on what you do with the gospel message. It depends on if you receive it and if you live it. Study to not be ignorant. We're going to study to not be spiritually blind. And I'm just going to scratch the surface of this next part. Most of these messages go 45 minutes to an hour. We're going to try to keep this one down probably to around 20 minutes or so, I, I believe. Because I've got a, a stack of notes here that it would take hours and hours to go through. Where we're just going to go through the first part to see what it is we're talking about. Study to not be spiritually blind. He says, don't fall in that trap. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Now, if there's a million people reading that, 999,000 and some more after that, not have any idea at all what he's talking about. That's what I'm talking about, about just splashing your face with a cool handful of water. It's just reading like a chapter of the Word or praying for 30 seconds. It, it's good. But it pales in comparison to jumping in the ocean. It pales in comparison to spending hours in the Word. It pales in comparison to actually looking up and seeing what words mean and seeing who different people in the scriptures are and seeing why they were called what they were and, and, and things of that nature. When you actually start putting the pieces all together, the word makes so much more sense and it's so much more powerful. Until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. He's talking about the harvest of the souls 
of the Gentiles. He's talking about the rapture. And he's talking long term about the second coming. Study to not be spiritually blind. We're going to look at three different portions of scripture quickly to show what he was talking about here. And then next week we'll be uh, getting back into this and uh, looking at studying how to live and to speak. Study to show God respect and going down through until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. That word dead there is necros, and it means a corpse. The word die is apophnesco, and it means to die off. So blessed are those blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. The word says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Any anyone that's a born again Christian that dies is ushered immediately into God's presence. So when he says, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, from henceforth, from the time of the resurrection on, those that die, die in the Lord. To be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. In Revelation 14, verses 14 to 16, it says, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud once sat like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in your sickle and reap, for the time has come for you to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And pulled out from the earth his harvest his crops. And we see in Revelation 14, 17 to 19. It says, And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven. He also had a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the altar which had power over fire. And cry with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in your sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth in it, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. There's two different events happening here. One was a harvest, the other was a gathering up of the waste, being tossed into the fire, being, being tossed into the judgment of God's wrath. When he says, until the fullness 
of the Gentiles become men. He's talking about the rapture of the church, the catching away. You know, Jesus said, be, be careful that you always be accounted worthy to escape these things which are about to happen on the earth. The, the only way that you can escape a worldwide judgment is to leave the world. Revelation 3.20, he says, Because you have kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. Revelation 3.10, I'm sorry. Because you've kept the word of my patience, I will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. That word, from, there is ek in the Greek, and it means out of. Because you've kept the word of my endurance, my trial, I will keep you out of the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Those he's talking to are going to be taken out of the world. They're going to be taken out of the earth. They're going to be taken out of the judgment. They're going to be removed. In chapter 4, verse 1, he says, I heard a trumpet calling unto me, which said, Come up hither. The, the word rapture we get from the Latin, and it, it's a word that denotes snatching up like a bird of prey, a rapture. That's why it's called the rapture. It, it's the catching away of the church, the translation of the church. The, 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 the pulling away, the removing, just like a, a bird of prey would swoop down and, and grab up whatever it's going to take with it. That's where we get the word rapture from. Paul says, study to not be ignorant. Study to not be spiritually blind. Don't fall into that trap. I want to look at uh, one more portion of scripture with you, and it's a portion that people usually don't think about when it comes to the rapture and the second coming and things like that. But we're going to go back to the Old Testament and back to Malachi. Chapter 3, verses 1 through chapter 4, verse 6. He says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in, behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. That is talking about the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist said, I am one that prepares the way for the Lord to make his path straight. He came to tell the people to repent. He came to turn the, tell the people to turn away from their sin. And to turn to God, the Messiah was coming. And that's what this pictures. In verses 2 through 5, he says, But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a, a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. We, we've skipped forward in time by a couple of thousand years. Jesus didn't appear 
like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He, he appeared as one that said, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. I came to be the one just. I came to be lifted up on the cross. And if the Son of Man be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. That's the Jesus we see in the Gospels. We went from that Jesus in one verse to a couple thousand years later, the Jesus that's going to be coming back. Who's going to be able to stand in the day of his coming? And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swears and against those that oppress the hireling and his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right and fears not me, says the Lord of hosts. Don't be spiritually blind. Israel, as Paul said, was spiritually blind. That spiritual blindness, that hardening of the heart, happened to Israel. And they didn't see the first coming that happened, as we see in Malachi 3.1. He says, who can stand? In chapter 3, of Malachi verses 6 to 12, he speaks of stewardship. He said, For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Well, what's he saying? My covenant with you doesn't change. My attitude towards you doesn't change. My intent towards you doesn't change. That's why you haven't already been destroyed. How could anybody be destroyed if that is his attitude towards us? Because we don't receive it. It's incumbent upon us to come into a covenant relationship with God that we call salvation. He says, even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from mine ordinances. You've stopped following my, my laws. You've not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you. And God is saying it's all up to you. I haven't gone anywhere. I haven't changed. That's why you haven't been judged yet. I'm still offering you salvation. I'm still offering you a way out. I, I've still come and died on the cross for you. I shed my blood for you. I stand here as a witness to that. He said, return to me, and I'll return to you. But you said, where shall we return? In every way. God asked him a question. He says, will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? When you don't spend time with the Lord, well, when you don't give money to God's causes, when you don't spend time in prayer, when you don't witness, when you don't follow the things that he's told us to do, you're robbing God. Well, a man robbed God, yet you have robbed me. But you say, where have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings, you're cursed with a curse, for you've robbed me. Even this whole nation 
bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house to prove and prove me now herewith says the Lord if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing and there shall not be room enough to receive it and I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field says the Lord of hosts and all nations shall call you blessed for you shall be a delight a delightful land says the Lord of hosts study to not be ignorant study to not be spiritually blind we can't look at things the way men look at things. We need to look at things through the lens of God's word. We need to be spiritually minded. We need to have a spiritual eye. And continuing on in Malachi 3, verses 13 to 15, he says, your words have been strong against me says the Lord yet you say what have we spoken against you you have said it is vain to serve God and what profit is it that we have kept his laws and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts You know, these people in their heart, whether they said it out loud or not, but in their heart said, what good is it to sit around and study the word of God? What good is it to sit around and pray? You know, why, why act like a bunch of monks? Let's party. He said, what, we, what good is it doing us to walk around mournfully before the Lord? And now we call the proud happy. Those that work wickedness are set up. They're held in high regard. Yea, those that tempt God are even delivered in our minds. Society does that today with politicians that are useless, that are evil, that fight and claw and lie with every last breath they've got to try to ensure that abortion stays legal. That they will do anything. I say this as the Judge Kavanaugh debacle has just ended yesterday they lie they fight they scrap in order to make sure that they can keep killing babies in order to ensure that homosexuals are allowed to marry in order to ensure that people who aren't citizens of this country are unable to just come and go as they please they, they want us to be a country without borders which would make us not a country at all a country has borders. A country is made up of the citizens of that country. Or else you just have one big world government, which is what they really want. But 
Those people are propped up. They're set up on a throne. They act like kings and queens being jetted all over the world. You know, Nancy Pelosi flies back and forth from California to Washington two or three times a week like a queen at the expense of the people, riding on the taxpayers' backs, just flying back and forth, saying the dumbest things you've ever heard, the evilest things you've ever heard at our expense. Actors are the same way. They make millions and millions of dollars. And we flock to the movie theaters and pay their salaries. And then they stand up there and tell us about the evil that's in their life. And they tell us they're going to move to another country if they don't get their way. They tell us how evil this country is and how the poor people are mistreated. And they live in $20 million homes and drive $200,000 vehicles and jet all over the world. If they're so concerned about the poor people, maybe they could uh, donate 99% of their money to poor people. But they're not really concerned about poor people. They just want to say they're concerned about poor people. And they want to make everybody else feel guilty. The people that are against American citizens being able to have weapons are the same people that have armed guards protecting them at all times. They have bodyguards go out with them, and those bodyguards all have guns on them. The hypocrisy is amazing. They're spiritually blind. They have no wisdom from God. They have no common sense. They say things that they think sound right, and they say things that make them feel better about themselves, like they're the, the moderators of truth and justice. And they have no idea because they are spiritually blind. I've gone over the amount of time that I intended to spend with this. We will take this back up next week. We'll dive back into Malachi and finish discussing it. And as I said, we will uh, be finishing up studying to not be spiritually blind. We're going to look at studying to show God respect. We're going to look at studying how to live and speak. We're going to learn to study to be quiet. We're going to study to prepare for victory. We're going to study to show yourself approved of God. We're going to study to know what is written. We're going to study to know How to have wisdom from God. And that's just the notes from this week. I'm sure we'll be adding to it. God bless you for uh, joining us today. This uh, served pretty much as an introduction of what we're going to be talking about the next uh, several weeks. I'd like to invite you to have a closing prayer with me if you would. Father, thank you. For this time to, to speak your word. The word says that if they do not speak according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. If, if the word of God is not what you filter everything through, listener, there's no light in you. Your life should reflect this word. Your mouth should be a, an instrument to proclaim this word, and your mind should be saturated with the word of God. If you haven't received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'd like to invite you to do so just now. 
and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I thank you for shedding your blood for me as the one-time perfect sacrifice for the sins of the world. I thank you that you died for me. I thank you that you have forgiven me of my sins, and I want to receive that just now. The forgiveness of my sins, the cleansing of my soul, and the rebirth in your spirit. And I ask for it, repenting, turning away from my sin, I turn to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us. We will see you next week. And uh, we're going to be digging deep into the Word of God. I invite you to join us. God bless you. Have a great week. Amen.